Well, welcome to College State. You're really like, welcome. Welcome to College State. It's a great day. It seems that we, we flood every fall, and then we have snowstorms every start of spring term. It just kind of seems that how college, what college days are made of in here. So thanks for your resilience to be here. Not too bad now. We're not sure what the rest of the day will look like, but we'll continue to follow the weather as we, as we should. You know, we're just a few weeks back from break. So college day doesn't fall like our professional day where the teachers are like the next day. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, being back and some time away and uh, truly having uh, what a winter break um, should be, and I hope it was for you. So the highlights for me, when it comes to a winter break, it's, it's, it's about family. I left in 2018. When I left that year behind, uh, I was really grateful. I was really grateful for a great year at Western, and I'll talk about that in a bit, but I was really grateful for some good things in my own family. Um, this past holiday season, my daughter flew home from Alaska where she's um, a college student, graduating in May, oh thank God. Um, but she came back for a pretty serious surgery. My, my daughter had a brainstem deformity that we didn't know about. She's had balance issues, headaches, and a whole slew of struggles her entire life, and it just took up until this point for us to really figure out what was going on and the right care. And, and she came home for a surgery. It was a seven hour um, brain fine brainstem surgery. Um, it went fantastic, it really did. So we're very, very grateful how well that went. But I don't know why it takes a serious health um, event, sometimes a funeral in our families, that just make us stop and really reflect on family on life, on balance, on quality of life, and wellness. And uh, so we were just very grateful over this holiday season for those things. We're blessed that my daughter Megan is doing very, very well. She's resilient, she had a very skilled surgeon. That, that surgeon had a team that was just phenomenal. I'm just amazed at the healthcare we have in our region and the opportunity. I'm also pretty excited. Uh, over the holidays, we found out I'm going to be a grandfather for the first time. All right. Pretty excited. Um, I don't know if that's applause or not, but that's, you can just see it in my wife's eye, the joys that she's carrying over this. And we have something that I think is a new anomaly, at least for me, a reveal party at our house on Sunday. 30 people come to find the gender. I don't know why they selected me to be the secret holder, but I was the secret holder, and we are going to have a baby boy uh, in the spring, so this is exciting for us. Uh, my son's getting married in a few weeks down in Arizona. I'll be traveling down there. I've got one graduating in May, and she's got a full ride to Michigan State for grad school, um, but she's hanging on because she's hoping for Ohio State. I mean, that's just so exciting for me that my daughter's done that well. Um, we have another daughter that's graduating in December, and so my wife and I spent 2019 so far, honestly, just talking about how blessed we were last year, how well things have gone for our family. So my hope when I talk to, to everybody here is, you know, I hope you had time for those human connections that we need on a day off, whether that's yesterday on Martin Luther King Day, whether that was over the holiday break, wherever that was, to really be with your family, lift up our lives, um, because again, health and family really matter. So let me start with the state of the college. And I, I got to say, I think we had an absolute uh, fantastic year. We finished off our referendum projects, and we've been hearing about them for years, right? We, we sent the last check, and that's in. We established a new set of strategic direction that we launched right here in the fall. Um, we call it Experience 2025. Today we'll talk specifically about First Choice Service. That's our anchor today. Um, we really tried to ground the work that we're doing in student success, and we launched, as Chad Dell called it, a movement towards every student every day. Um, and that's just big work, big, big work by all of us. Um, we rolled out a new sustainability plan. We rolled out a new foundation plan. We built a new vet center. We uh, remodeled a library to what I think is just something that's absolutely special and beautiful. Um, we invested in robotics and technology and industry 4.0. And advanced labs and wrote grants and advanced programming related to automation, which is what our employers are screaming for. We finished public safety projects with a new burn tower. We are working diligently on a new firing range that will finish this spring. Um, we embraced a new enrollment journey. And I'll tell you what, that is just 100 people in this room that were directly connected to really changing from how we bring a student in and follow them and have a relationship with them. 
We implemented visual management. You're going to see stuff in the back of the room today. We're going to have time and break today to explore that. It's about knowing what our targets are and reaching those targets and doing it together. We launched an important CRM system. What's a CRM? It's a customer relationship manager. There's another 100 people in here involved in that and very excited about being able to actually track a student all the way through that system. It was a big integration project, and we're, we're only partially through that, but a big part of it, uh, the recruitment piece, has been launched. Uh, many pieces to go. And of course, you know, we graduated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students for our employers. So Western had a really exceptional, exceptional. I'd like to talk about how Western is strong. We have a great mission. We, we're supported by our employers. There's just no question about it. We're respected by the community. We have absolute beautiful campuses. We've got strong relationships with our K-12 partners. We are a strong choice with those partners. We're a strong choice for adults. We really are. We're a collective group of people that care about students. And this room is full of people that absolutely care about students. From an FTE standpoint, uh, we're right around 1% up over last year at this time, so we're on target to hit our revenue goals. But what's important with that, what's really important is that we're doing that at a time one of the most difficult economies for Western. And that means we're in a good economy. So it's difficult to recruit and retain, and we've done both. So I want to do a shout out for those of you on the front end in recruitment, admissions, financial aid, registration, career counseling, those that visit the high schools, those that give tours and getting people in, giving them the exposure, helping them choose. And then I have to say for everybody, Everybody in this room that work on that, keep the ducks in a row. And certainly our teachers, our counselors, our advisors, but every one of you that have a touch point with students once they're here to make sure that they stay at this college. Um, when it comes to commitment to Western, you know, I just, I just want to remind us about a few things. We, we have stable funding. Now, it could be more. It certainly could be more, and I can talk about that later. But from a bond rating standpoint, we have, we have stable funding, and we are thankful for that. Uh, we have a good tax base. We can't levy anymore, but we have a good tax base here, but we have growing construction in the region, and that is something we're able to levy from. We have legislators that believe in the work we do. Now, several of the board members were able to travel this last Thursday um, with myself. Randy Dakin was along, and we had a legislative day, and we met with legislators at the Capitol. And I, I've never been greeted with such open arms as we were at that. They know how important we are to the economy today. I hope they are when it's time to vote, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. We have partnerships with industry that are strong. We have connections in every single employment sector, and that's because of all of you. So we're recognized. We have a board that believes in our staff, and that this staff will help us meet experience 2025. I'm going to call up, because I haven't done this before. Um, a few of the people weren't able to make it today. Um, Dave Lane is superintendent of Bangor Schools, so he sent me a note. He actually called me this morning to apologize that he wasn't going to make it because he wanted to. But he's watching the weather for their evening events and afternoon events as a superintendent of schools. Ed Lukasik, and uh, Ed is, I believe, going to be here. He's, is he? All right, great. There's Ed. Ed, a new grandpa, by the way, with baby Eddie. So Ed Lukasik, representative from Monroe County. Um, Terry Buss from Juneau County. We have Dan Hansen from La Crosse County. Dan's here. We have Andrew Broussard, who's here, our, is our vice chair. We have Angie Lawrence from Vernon County, who's our board chair. Angie's here. We have Ken Peterson uh, from GF Brennan. We have Michelle Granier from Jackson County and also represent the Ho-Chunk Nation. And we have Dennis True from Monroe County. And Dennis is in Florida, I believe, enjoying, no, Arizona actually. He's down in Arizona enjoying some finer weather than we have. And then I think we also should talk about the people that work and serve at Western because they want to make a difference. So I'm grateful for all that grace that we show for continuous quality improvement Changes just continuous in our quest to serve every student every day. Now, Angie Lawrence is our board chair, and she said to me the other day, as an organization and a staff, if you're not changing to move forward, you're really going backwards. There's just no staying the same. And I think that's just the reality of the business that we're in today. And so we're perpetually moving forward. Experience 2025 is about keeping that focused, so we're doing it in a very intentional way. We've embraced retention as everyone's job. We're a leader. We're a leader in the state of student data. We've done exceptionally well in this area, so thank you for embracing that. And I'd like to announce right now, 
Um, and by the way, this is not public, but public. So this, I'm like telling the group this. It's official tomorrow. And I had a note that said, don't talk about it until tomorrow, but I just can't keep the secrets. <laughs> uh, I'm going to announce that after almost five years of being a part of Achieve the Dream, Western was selected with an Eater College status. And that is a really big deal. <laughs> Um, I'll talk about some of the folks in a second, but it comes with responsibility. What it means is we have advanced so much in five years. We've done great work all the way along, but we finally reached the point where we can start to really make the impacts and follow the measures and see what impacts make a difference. Because we didn't have those structures in place, and that's what this work has been. So that's what it means to be a leader college. We will mentor other schools, we'll share best practices, we share our data, we share our data structures. We work on policy locally, state level, nationally, because we're, we're real advocates for student success, and that's part of the responsibility of being a leader college, and it's been quite a commitment. So the benefit is, is we get access to some grants that we didn't have before, to studies, to research, to professional development, and to exemplar colleges that we did not have access to before. So that's just wonderful. And a shout out to everyone that's worked on student success, but there's probably 100 people in this room that have done specific Achieve the Dream activities over the last five years, so I thank you for that. And again, Mariana couldn't make it today, but a shout out to Mariana Thornton. She not only has kept the movement going, but she wrote just an amazing, strong application um, for us, and we were selected um, for this honor. To me, it's just a sign of a culture moving very intentionally to every student every day, and that's what we're working on. So, speaking of student success, oh, there's the board picture. I, I said the board already, so we can past that one. Sorry, board. I intended on that being up when I was talking about the board, and I'm not controlling. I messed that one up. That's a great picture. It's our experience 2025 picture. Um, I want to talk a little bit about just two key results. I only have two graphs on data that are on here. Um, this is an important one, our third year graduation. Third year graduation. It is a key metric. Nationally, it's a huge metric. We went up 10.5% between uh, 15 and 16 graduates. That's our three-year declaration. And this means that we guide more students in the best fit programs. This means that we help more students finish on time. This means that we're more timely in providing more students to graduate <coughs> for our employers. It's nationally recognized. It's really, I think, a, a good shout out, a good move on our, our piece. The next one I want to shout out is a direct connection to Experience 25, a, a direct connection. Um, we have a strategy to improve completion for Experience 25, that is, to bridge a gap for African American students, Latino students, and Native American students. This has been an area that there's a, there's a major gap um, in completion. But over, <coughs> since 2013, we've had a, a 15 percentage point gain um, on how well African American students have completed. And I think the interesting fact is that we have 30 percent more African American students during that time period. And that's just good for Western, it's good for our region, it's good for our employers. So it's a good stat for us to continue to track. I want to talk a little bit about our challenges. You know, what are, what are some of the real challenges before us? Well, revenue caps are, are a real, they're still there. Limited tuition increases, I, I think that will be a continuation in our legislative, legislature and our state board. Uh, legislature will keep talking about keeping the cost down. Our state board will keep saying, well, then let's keep that very minimal. Um, we're still frozen in our ability to tax besides net new construction. I think, again, I mentioned the strong economy impacts us, but um, we've worked really hard on retention, and that's been really a savior for us and a savior for so many students, so thank you. Um, we have the pressures to add more online. Our online is filling. Our flexible learning is filling, so there's just a lot of pressure for that. Um, I will say that our online completion is up 3.5% over the last few years, which is a really good sign for great teaching, great instructional design. I think a movement towards our Blackboard shell, which was very intentional. Our students were here in 2014 and they begged for it right up on this stage to have that uniform. And I think that's making a difference in our completion. But they're asking for more, they're looking for us to be more flexible. And I think the next economy, the next recession, which might be two years, might be three years away. So Western's ready for it. I'm just encouraging programs to consider seven and eight week chunking. And we'll talk about more of that as we move along. But that's the next right answer. And that's where uh, all the co colleges around us are going. And um, I don't want Western to, to miss opportunity. 
From a challenge standpoint, I want to talk a little bit about web security. I am so afraid to send an email out to everybody. <laughs> and everybody's going to think it's just spam or like, oh my, I need to click and put my social security number in. This makes sense to me. Um, I tell you, I will not. I will not ask you for that personal information. I'm not going to send out links for you to say, please log in for my email. They typically will grab my email and try to use it. There's so many false phishing scams. Um, thank you for the folks that just delete them. There's a lot of people that forward them to IT and say, hey, this looks like garbage. Uh, many that send to me, is this real? Because I'll help you if you want it, but this doesn't look right. And I always send back, thank you, no. Uh, it's not. Um, you know, some of them are not even, they don't even cover up like the name. You just look at the name and you can tell. Other ones you have to hover over it. But remember, we all had that training, and there's a reason we had it. It's a really big deal. And most of the people in this room do not know it, but I'm going to share. We had two people get hacked. Two people lost their payroll this fall. Very real. I've got to tell you, these people were genius, the process they used. They had a bunch of people involved in the college, and they all thought they were talking to an employee, and they were talking to somebody in another country. Right? And so, when you click in and you add those credentials, it's not going to come from me. And they often will start there. So, I, you know, it all worked out. We took care of those people. Those people took care of us. Uh, but it's just a very, very real threat. So when we say there's training, it's because it's a big deal. Our networking team spends hours and hours with thousands of attacks in this college every single day. Every single day. And they work on it. And the ones that get through can be pretty painful for some people. So. On a normal one, when Janice is helping me, it's going to say information flow. That's how I do it. Someone from the outside is not going to know information flow, right? They wouldn't know that. The only links I send are typically videos and pieces that are connected to SharePoint. Um, I'm not going to be the one to send out forms for people to fill out. And I just want to say that because it's just, it's such a danger and they usually use my name in and, and most of them when they do this. But i got to give a shout out to the network team and those in IT that do an endless battle to prevent us from cyber attacks. It's a big deal. Uh, the ARC remodel, I have it down as a challenge, but it's absolutely a, a, a celebration. Um, when, we, when we did the referendum, we, we promised the Academic Resource Center that they were next. And so we, we went through and we upgraded the library this past year. We added a vet center on there, which was wonderful. And now we have really, there's about four more projects inside and with the help and support of our board, we're escalating that instead of going three more years into one major chaotic summer. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, it's organized chaos, but we're moving everybody out so that we only have to do it one year. And it was a lot of thought, a lot of discussion, but it's, we just felt, let's do it one year, build the signs. We have shown that we're a resilient college and that we can handle this. So I'm really excited about what it means when we come back in the fall, how great it will be, but there will be some chaos during the move. Uh, from a hopes and dreams category, I, I created another category here. I hope that we continue to have more students persist and complete. I hope that uh, Governor Evers supports our request. We asked for $48 million as a system for student aid. Right now, our student aid compared to the states around us is minuscule in state grants compared to how the other states around us support it. We asked for $36 million in direct investment in the technical college system. And we made a promise that we would use it for programming and for student success work. That's what we made a commitment for. If you remember a few years back, they took away $30 million. And we're asking for that investment back into our system. That was our legislative ask. I hope that we see, I hope that students see Western as a college of first choice. That's our vision. What we're trying to do is put strategy to that vision. I hope that 100% of Western Technical College staff, it's all of you, I hope that you believe in Experience 2025. I can hope. But we have to model it, we have to be there for you, we have to help you understand it, we have to help you feel a part of it, and I hope you'll join. Again, we're calling it a movement, and it's very important work towards every student every day. Now, I do expect that the college moves forward, and I hope to earn your respect in experience 2025 and make you say, you know, I believe in these four things that I'll cover in just a second. <clears throat> With experience 2025, though, I expect that every guest, every student, every community member or employer that visits has a positive emotional experience. That's what's first choice services and that's our, our talk today. I expect guided pathway work to continue. I hope that we work towards solid block schedules for our programs. I hope that we finally get to some first choice syllabi, really have program syllabi. That to me is first choice. I think that we 
continue to work on a vocabulary of student success that we all understand, a vocabulary of service and service standards. I expect that programs work diligently to infuse community-based learning. We're going to get to 100% over the next few years, the same as work-based learning in every program. That's, that's our commitment. We're going, to, we're going to move that direction. Many of you are in excellent shape. Some of you are already check those two things done, but we want to move it in there. And finally, I hope that we consider 2019 to be a year of wellness, um, physically, mentally, for Western. I'm just grateful that we have a really cool team that's come together. Um, Ryan Monroe is our new wellness center manager, and he's asked folks from across the college that represent different areas, and they're here to help, you know, challenge us, and send to us, provide us with opportunity, I commit to my own wellness in 2018, and especially in 2019, I began with a trainer. I invite you to consider what we have at the Wellness Center. It's pretty amazing down there, but it's just something that, um, you know, personally I've been reflecting on in our family, and my wife, my life, my children. I hope that you'll consider that for a healthier Western. Um, we're gonna talk about our strategic directions, and I'm, this is just a fast slide. We're really focused on first choice service today. Uh, but this is what we brought to you in fall. Equity, inclusion, and support. This is a clear direction. A clear direction is workforce and community engagement. We set that off in motion. Employee engagement. I ask you, ask you to be a part of it and to want to be a part of it to learn more. But we will focus on first choice. And before I can really begin that, I have to just mention it's a cultural change to really be. And I'm going to share some cultural things um, from some outside employers um, to help model it here. But without culture, without really thinking every student every day is my job, and really looking at it from that lens, if we don't have that in front of each and every one of us, then all of these things are just actions, isolated actions based on a strategic goal. And strategic goals are important. I'm a real measurement person. But we have to build a culture that says it's okay to do this. I'm comfortable with this. I know what to say. I know what to do. So we're going to work on all those things together this year and continue that work. So let's talk about our focus in here. This is our topic. Um, last month, I get a call from my wife. My wife was parked on a city street where she works, and there was somebody cleaning up the sidewalks. It was a city worker doing his job. He had a front end loader, and he had a back hole on it. He backed up for a pedestrian, and he whipped around, and that back hole went right in the back of our Jeep. And it crushed in the glass, the, the tailgate door. It crushed in the sides of it. And so she gets a call in the middle of work, and, and, and she starts. She was very upset, let's just say. Um, by the way, this is supposed to be my Jeep. Uh, she found out it had a heated steering wheel, and I am lucky I drive this once every 30 days. I'm serious. That's, that's true. But anyway, so now it's her Jeep was hit, and she was very upset and, and crushed. Uh, but I want to share a first choice service in auto body. Okay, so just it's not education, it's auto body. So I make a call to the auto body shop. She's down there, she's upset, she has to go. But she's a nurse, so she has to run back upstairs. She's just checking out her last patient. She wants to finish it up. And so I said I would give the, the body shop a call. And uh, I recorded it, um, notes. I took good notes because I always want to be ready on what we're supposed to do. And so I explained what happened, and, I, and I'm going to try to do a dialogue here. I'm not really good at it. I'm certainly not an actor. Uh, but the first comment back was, this is just awful. How can we help you through it today? And I said, well, we don't know if we can drive it. Can you look at it? And they said, should we go get it? Or is it something you think you can get here? And I said, well, it might not be until after 4 p.m. What time do you close? And he said, not a problem. We can help. If it's drivable, we'll clean it up and cover it up with a good poly. And, and he said to get the parts and do all that stuff. His worry was he didn't have a loaner right now because they were all out until Monday. And again, I said, well, what time do you close? And he said, doesn't matter. We will get this cleaned up for you. And I said, wow, you know, thank you very much. And he said, let, let me check on a loaner and see if there's anything that I can do. I'm really worried with the back out that your taillights may be out. So you might have a short term be able to drive it here, but it might not be a long term answer. So while I was talking, she texted me and said she could be there by 4 o'clock and that it was drivable. And so he said, don't worry, we'll, we'll take care of her. And about an hour later, about an hour later, um, we find out that our SUV is clearly not fit to be driven safely any distance. Um, and they stayed really late um, to help us get it set up. They actually went down to the dealership and picked up a car for us to drive that was not part of their plan. Um, but they did that without us asking. They, they worked with our insurance, right? And you've had this experience. They contacted the city and handled all the back end work because it really wasn't our insurance. But they handled it all. They just took care of it. 
Um, on the pickup, my wife said, did somebody turn in the loaner? And they said, no, no, we just took care of it. I just called down the dealership and they sent something up right away. Um, that was a pretty amazing service. And believe me, my wife is hard to impress. I impress her very little. <laughs> she was blown away with the service. She felt they genuinely cared about her and her safety. Um, they kept her in the loop. They texted her every single day and they called her twice during that week that they had the car. It was about seven days. Um, and this is an auto body shop. This isn't Nordstrom's or Saks Fifth Avenue or Tiffany. Um, this is a local auto body shop that wanted her experience to be extraordinary. They owned the relationship. They cared about getting back on the road safely. And my wife was so impressed. The next day, this is just not my wife. If you know her, she would never order pizza because that's unhealthy. But she ordered far more large pizzas and had it sent down to the auto body shop just to tell them thank you for the way they handled it. And uh, again, she's just never that happy. So this is. I'm going to be honest. I get feedback about two things on the survey. Jackie gets feedback that please speak. We want you up here. That's the feedback she gets. I get two things. I get some nice comments, but I get a couple of things that are important to some people. Um, the first one is stop talking about your family. Um, and I think family is the thing that brings us all together. I just can't honor that request. I just will always mention my family. It's who I am. It's an important part of who I am. But the other one, the other one is we're not a business. Quit calling us a business. And it's over. It's on there. It's on there every year. It's been on there every year that I've been here because I've said it every year that I've been here. Um, so let's think about a potential student. What are they? What can they do? Right around us, Winona, CETC, UWL, Southwest, and so Southeast, Turbo, Rochester, not that far away, Mid-State, not that far away, Upper Iowa, a slew of online choices. If you look at the technical college system with how many things are online, they've got choices that are a direct competition all the time. We are a business. We're really good at what we do. We do some amazing things. We're an excellent college. We're focused on being better and to be the best. So, Service to me matters, and there's a couple ways to look at service, but I, but I hope you get where I'm coming from. You know, we can't just wait and hope somebody just drops by and says, teach me something. We want to be intentional. We want to give them something that differentiates Western. And if you're here a lot, you know it. When you're here, you feel it. But we need it in the entire continuum of first choice service. Not pieces of first choice service that are like this. We need to be consistent. You know, service before self, that altruistic reason that we're here is beautiful. One great reason for service and first choice service. The second one is about treating people right, treating each other right, creating an experience that's really just Western. And I gotta tell you, I feel it. I feel it a lot of times here. This auto body place owned it. They took most of the decisions out. They took care of the details. They followed up on every point. They communicated. They personalized it. They did what they promised. They followed through. They gave us quality and on time. Isn't that what we all expect when we purchase their service, right? Someone to care, someone to help, someone to own it, someone to follow through, someone to make it personal, and, I, and I'll add someone that's genuine, that feels genuine in that process. You know it when you feel it. You know it when you feel it at the post office or your hair salon, your dental hygienist, a financial institution you work with, a grocery store, even our kids' school. We expect that when we're at our children's school. So people should expect it at a college. And I think that that's okay. It's so special when people receive extraordinary, and we know it when we get it. So I think that'll differentiate Western, that we get, become very consistent in. I've had the privilege to observe some amazing first choice service here at Western, and I know many others have shared with me great stories of service. I send a lot of cards out to try to thank people. It can be truly special when it's there, when it's really, really first choice. I've observed it personally at the Welcome Center, division offices, student life, the union market all the time. I listen to students share about the teacher that changed their lives, the advisor that showed them the way, and got them through a rough time, the security staff that gave them a pass on a bad day, the dean that gave them a second chance to succeed. I've heard it from staff to staff over and over. Could be technology people that save the day, security people save the day, safety issues. It's all first choice. Um, in fact, we're, we're putting together, um, working with the foundation to build a, and, and Jackie to work on a first choice service award for recognition of staff to staff recognition next year. On a recent Saturday night, we were at this certain restaurant, and I don't want to say the name, but it was your chocolate factory. <laughs> the food, you would expect it to be great, and it was. It was lovely, but what made it amazing, 
Oh yeah, had an incredible view of the rotary lights, you know, location, location, location. But what made it an amazing night for us was an extraordinary server. Genuine, cared, made the night special, knew the menu, knew the wine, knew the recommendation, cared about us, gave us a wonderful tone, uh, just amazing eye contact, extensive knowledge, you know, this just knew, could describe everything on the menu, cared enough to ask, cared enough to check back on us, made us feel truly, truly special. It was extraordinary, it was an extraordinary experience. And we have a daughter that's a server at Grandma's in Duluth, and so we've always, we get good service, we really tip well, because we know how hard these folks work that serve us. You know, at Western, we don't get to put a cup out, right? We don't get the tip. It doesn't, you know, like, nice class today. We have tried that. That wasn't an idea. But <laughs> I can see the coffee cups. Uh, but you know, we get those smiles, those sincere thank yous. The, oh my God, you saved my life right in their eyes that comes out, that feeling of going home gratified. To me, that sense, those of you that go to graduation, I wish everyone would, it's an amazing experience when you watch them be successful. So I have to ask you today, what if? What if we all thought of every interaction with students, employers, and community members as fine dining? What if? Does that sound ridiculous? Maybe. But how about if, if we talk to every person in front of us and we felt responsible for their experience, and we thought of it that way, I feel responsible for your experience. If every one of us felt responsible for their journey, if every one of us felt responsible for the student having the best information, the best experience, a personal connection, if we all did that, would we differentiate Western? Would Western be just that college you had to go to because it was so, so amazing? We do this often, but again, we have some of this. We just want to have a high level every intersection of the college. Today is going to be, I think, a really neat morning. We have a short video from some of our staff put together to highlight some service that I, I think it came together really well. It started out as just an idea and some people took off with it. We have a student panel today. Several of our students are going to be up here with me. We're going to have some questions with them. The student voice. Um, we're going to encourage you to do a gallery walk today. You have to see some things around the room. We'll take a we'll take a long break and put a visual management tour in for that. Um, we have a special employee joining me today on stage who um, will tell their story of surviving and now thriving. When just a year and a half ago, we all sat in this room worried if this person was alive. So we'll have that story when we get back from break. And then to drive our message home, um, our, our leaders will talk about the strategic direction, and we'll close it up with some of the folks from our Welcome Center staff. Um, my final challenge today um, is on service standards. I am going to challenge the college to come together and develop a set of service standards for every person in this room. Maybe that's three things that all of us will do. Do it consistently. I'm challenged Western to come together to collaborate on three unified standards to get to every student every day. One simply could be wear a name tag. I'll tell you what, so we know that's there. So that could be really, really simple. Um, but what are the other things that are for everybody? And then once we have those, boy, what does it mean for health and public safety? What does it mean for finance and ops? What are their two service standards? And then maybe there's your program. What are your service standards? So in the end, we're focused on it. We have something we all commit to by heart. That's my challenge today for our senior leaders. That's our challenge for our managers. Put that together for our staff and faculty to come together to build that. Um, next up, I want to introduce to you um, two folks that put a lot of, a lot of time into this. Um, Eric from Public Relations um, and Ray, who's an instructor and sales manager. They're going to introduce a little service video and a fun project to demonstrate first choice service. So can I turn it over to Ray and to Eric? because in being in business across the nation uh, over the last 20 years here, one thing that I saw that was a common denominator for all great organizations was first choice service. And so I was really excited to see that because I knew that it would lead to great things for our organization. And rather than trying to explain it really what it is, we thought we would hear 
from you. And so uh, with the expertise of Eric, uh, with, his, uh, with his cameras, we went around and we talked to many of you to find out and get examples of what really we meant by first choice service when the leadership team put that as a main pillar of 2025. And um, we took tons of footage, and, um, and we think, uh, and with, with Eric's expertise, I don't know how he did it and got it down to two or three minutes, uh, what he did, and he did a great job on it. So if we could play that video, that would be great. <coughs> never get a second chance to make a first impression, so that's always what stays in the back of my mind with every student, every email, every phone call, every in-person um, time with a student. That's always the, the quote that I think of. I hooked people up with babysitters because they didn't have any. Um, I borrowed people jumper cables because their car would start. I, I have gone out of my way sometimes to give people a ride, pick them up from hospital appointments. Um, acting more like a friend and a mentor than a teacher in a lot of instances is really important to these folks um, because a lot of times we are in the school of second ch chance too and we have to make sure that this second chance is going to work and really it's just kind of relating to them at that ground level to let them know that um, that you're here to help them here to help them and we have all worked through that journey, and what can we do to help you? My supervisor has always said that the first few minutes they decide they're going to come here or not is when they walk from our parking lots to our bathrooms. I have the flexibility here and um, to be able to just, I can pull the student aside, we can talk and just, just and talk about my experience going back to school. I went back after 17 years. Um, so you're very it's relatable. Intimidating to come back like, as an adult. A lot of times we're sharing curriculum. Um, so if somebody has to set up a new class, uh, they don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know, we'll share curriculum. And that's actually, as, you know, twofold also. It helps them get rolling, but it also makes sure that our curriculum is aligned throughout. It's my job to make sure that my students are prepared to be successful electronic engineers in the field. And uh, therefore, it's, it's important that I make sure and provide them with the information that's pertinent to industry and pertinent for them to carry on to the next level of education. Whatever we can do to attract and retain students who take it very personally here from a clean campus to a, a helpful, willing attitude to clean, dry sidewalks in the wintertime, just anything we can do to once that student steps on campus, we're like, they really want me here. We get a lot of students that will come in right out of the service. Okay. They don't know if they want to go to school. Um, we're kind of like their first stop. They'll come in. Uh, walk them through their benefits, what they're eligible for, um, how long they can go to school for, and then we kind of refer them to um, the student services, uh, you know, admissions, and walk them through their counselors, um, get them in the program that they want to get into. Many times I will share with them my personal journey where um, I did. So relate to them based on you, because you've been there, right? Right, been there, done that, and here are the things that I learned along the way, and here are little tricks and you know, organizational things that you can do to be successful. Just working together to kind of mend our brains together yeah. to really provide the best service Maybe for students. students. Right. Yeah. They know some things that I don't know and I know some things that they don't know. And I, I treat my students just like I treat my own children. I want somebody to treat my children. The first two letters in Western, W-E, it's we. We are here to help you get to where you want to be. What I do is just so important. It changes lives. It, it, it changes the direction of one person which then is going to trickle down and change their children or their children. Can that camera that you have to, beautiful camera, 
Can it make you 10 pounds lighter and 10 years younger? Sorry guys, it didn't work. But it is, we tried. Um, but thank you for participating. Deb was up there five minutes before the bistro opened. I mean, pots are flying, everything's going, and she's sitting there cool as a cucumber, man. It was awesome. And Mary, we, we ambushed her. She was eating nachos, and uh, she put those to the side and, uh, and gave us some really, really great stuff that really hits at the heart of it. But the truth be told, you guys, we could have came to all of you. We could have came to any one of you. It just happened that we, we got these folks on the video, but the reality is is we could have hit any one of you. We could have had 450 stories and they would have been all great because you know in your heart that first choice service is the right thing. Uh, I'll just wrap up with this. I love what Deb said and I think it's a great analogy is if the student in front of you was your son or your daughter what would you do for them? And if we did it for them, why don't we do it for the student that isn't your son? Thank you. Uh, Eric has just done a phenomenal job on Western social media pages. <laughs> talk about registration just right away live financial aid they're just doing a great job and thank you Ray for your continued passion um, Mary said something that I really appreciate in there and I've never thought of before and I think I'll have to use it in the future and that's the first two letters in Western is we and you know I've been here a long time and I never even thought of it that way so I really some of you may have but I really appreciated that message coming forward um, next I'd like to invite the students to the stage we can come up and do three here. We're gonna have three students join us, so let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> You heard what I was talking about earlier with first choice, uh, but for me, just to summarize it overall, it's about being genuine, about being there, listening, helping, caring, coaching. Um, first choice service can come sometimes with a push, like we believe in you, but you've got to be there. And, and sometimes it's a celebration. It could be good news, it could be bad news when we work with students. But it should leave you with a positive emotional experience. And that's how we've essentially really tried to frame what we believe First Choice Service is. Um, I'm gonna ask a couple of the questions and just from our ground rules, and we talked a little bit ahead of time. Not everyone has to answer every question. I'll start with somebody, but if there's something you would wanna add, we would welcome you to add to any of the questions. I'm gonna start with Perla. So if you would describe the best experience you received at Western and why you thought that was so, such a great experience? Um, I'm actually in Western student government and that was the best <laughs> choice that I could have made because I made so much friends through that and I have so many, I have met so many people and that I think is the best experience I've had at Western. And why did you choose student government? Why did you choose that leadership role? Um, when I was in high school, I was always so involved in like school activities and stuff. So when I saw that um, Western did have student government or something that I could give to the school, I was very um, excited that they had that. So I, they, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lisa and May, what about you guys? Is there any best experience you'd like to share related to Western and maybe one? Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so before I. You know, come to Western here. I had, and I could have gone to back to uh, give it across and finish my master. But you know, I feel like I am 30. You know, at the time I'm 30, 36, and like went to you know the university. Just like you know, the last three, four years that I had uh, pressure from there, I can't you know get a job because I wasn't you know. Uh, <clears throat> helped being prepared for my career and I was in one one route. I mean I was going for finance but then I was working in IT and it wasn't really, you know, and my advisor wasn't, you know, helping me if okay, you're not in the right place because if you're going for finance, you should at least, you know, work somewhere in the bank and you know, somewhere related to where you used to come to school for. But 
<coughs> so, um, I, I was talking to, you know, Susan, and at that time I was deciding, should I go for electrical uh, mechanical, or should I go for, you know, biomedical, because I did a little session both, and she really, you know, opened my eyes that, okay, uh, <coughs> that's what I need for biomedical, because there's a lot of people who are going you know, to be retired, and, you know, there are some people that, you know, work in the field for, you know, for a while, you know, that they uh, have the opportunity to, you know, climb up and, you know, make more. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going there to just to make more money, but you know, at the same time, I, I love, you know, helping people, you know, working on electronics, working, uh, fixing things, so I feel that that's more, more great to me than, you know, uh, the other part, and so that's why I, is, is the, the, <clears throat> the person that, you know, can help you, that, they're not, they're not just there to, you know, make business, to, to make you go to something, something that you don't really, you know, want to go. They uh, try to help you find a way to, you know, really bring your potential to make you better. It sounds like you received some, some good coaching, yeah. some good advice on some things you were exploring, and, and uh, I think you had a show up for a there, so I think that was good. Uh, Lisa, I'm gonna ask you a question. During your time at Western, could you share with us who positively influenced you on your educational journey and why? Every teacher that I've had has had a positive impact on me, but the very first term in this program, I had a rocky start because my son, two days before the term officially started, my son was in a major motorcycle accident in Virginia. So I went to Virginia and was his sole caregiver and transportation for the first three weeks of the new program. And that was fun. And But I kept, you know, both Susan and Tamara, I let them know what was going on. And they assured me, just take care of your kid. Don't worry about your schoolwork. Well, I managed to only be one week behind after the first three weeks. And so that, that experience was actually the best experience because I realized I can handle what's thrown at me and my teachers are gonna work with me regardless. So both of those teachers was like, okay, this is gonna be fine. <laughs> So they recognized you were in a very tough place and they helped you work through a tough situation so you can be successful. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Anybody else want to add on to that particular one during your time at Western? Could you share with us who positively influenced? Well, just like she said, the, the teachers here are so wonderful. They will always help you if you have a question. And they will never say no to you and they will always be there to help you with the homework and stuff like that. So I think the teachers here are amazing. You know, I'd like to ask you too about that. Uh, um, you know, after so many years out of school, you know, I graduated in 05, and I'm going back to school, and uh, I was 16. I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna, you know, make it a math, so I took a, I took a, uh, and like a refresh in my, my memory in math, and, some of my instructors, you know, well, not some, most of all of my instructors, are, you know, great instructors. They, they're, they're really good at, you know, teaching. You know, they uh, really help you understand how, you know, how, how, how it works and how to come to a solution. And I was, I was kind of amazed how, you know, Western, you know, instructors are helping me because when I. Back in high school, I had a lot of math, and I, was, I, I told myself that I was going to be a you know, math instructor one day. But after I graduated, I went to a you know, two-year degree at the Lakeshore. Didn't do too well, I suppose, you know. It could be me, you know, because I was too young. But I didn't really you know, put my you know, thoughts into the course. But over here, I, I was able to 
you know, do really well, you know, uh, from tech math, you know, uh, and physics. I think it's, to me, these instructors are really, they really know what they're doing. They really know how to teach, how to make understand. And uh, not just that, my wife was saying that she goes to uh, kind of like a ESL, and she brought homework for me to help her, so I, so I kind of help her write it down, write you know, her, home, her uh, homework. She took it to school, and she said, so you're in college, but then I took your, I took your, my assignment to my, uh, my teacher, and you know, it's all red. Like, my grandma is like, you know, it's, 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 when my papers are written really well because, you know, I take it to, you know, I, I take it to, to get help. And I think with a tutor, and they, you know, they help me uh, correct my you know, grammar and punctuation. So after I was read, you know, they make it so green. You know, they help you, you know, if you're not good something, you go there. And when I struggle in math, you know, I go to the math tutor and they, you know, they really help you know, me understand and help me you know, go through the uh, <coughs> course that, or subject that I you know, struggle with. So that's kind of the uh, you know, service that I get from here. An extra push, a little extra help yeah. on it when you need it and people have respect. And everybody gets it the first time. But it takes a little bit more to get there. Um, this is a question we had. We had a fourth student that was unable to make it here, and so this was a question we had put for them. But I'll put it up to you and see if anybody's comfortable with it. You, you know, what do you believe are the qualities of first choice service at a college? When you looked at coming to college and what you might be looking for, when do you see it? When do you feel it? Anything stand out to you? Okay. Um, when I got out of high school, I wasn't accepted to um, Winona State, and I was so ready to go there. But then um, I know I knew someone that went to Western too, so I was like, "Oh, um, I'm gonna go get a tour of Western and see what it's all about." And I was walking around, and the campus was just beautiful. And the tour was telling me of all the good things about Western, and I was hooked. So then I also applied to Western, at, and I got in. And I think being here and how all the teachers really help you, how they listen to you, the advisors and everything, it's just wonderful. And I don't think it could have gotten that at Winona State because it's such a big school. And I just feel like here it's more personalized for you. And I think that's just so much better than going to a four-year college or university. I think what I heard was Western's clearly stronger than Winona State. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, when I first heard that term, I was kind of scratching my head, what do you mean? But then after watching your video on your own, it's like you took all my answers. And so, yeah, I would agree with your definition of first choice service and that I would commend everybody here for your efforts and you are succeeding. I'll, I'll I have a question for me. You know, in the future, let's go out a few years, and now you're an alumni, and you're looking back at your experience of, of Western. What would you share about others about Western? He's got no. Let's go with him too. Well, the. Uh, <clears throat> I would have to say that uh, Western is a very, you know, it's a great college. Um, you know, compared to, you know, the, the two colleges I went to before, prior to Western here, um, you know, Lakeshore Tech, you know, it's a great school too. I <coughs> commute there every, every day, you know, just like you know, most, most students too as well. But, you know, I feel like I wasn't uh, getting the right support, the right uh, guide. You know, I was in the uh, computer programming over there. You know, we were programming. Uh, it's a it's a language that's 
I'm not sure if it's used anymore, but you know, unlike unlike here, my instructor, you know, I, I mean, uh, my main instructor is really, uh, in her class, you know, towards graduation, when you're getting close to graduation, she makes sure that you, you know, you get you get into career service. She bring in a uh, you know, career service to, you know, to teach us about, you know, searching for a job, uh, to give us, you know, make sure we do go through a mock interview, and you know, we actually go into person to interview as well as, you know, interview on, on the computer, like face-to-face, -face, like, like the recording, and, and then she gets to review our, uh, our interview. So that kind of a guidance, you know, pushing us to, to prepare us for, you know, for that interview when we're done, and also to make make sure that we are continuously searching for jobs, so we know that there's there's opportunity out there and you know, to apply and prepare ourselves for it. Uh, my other you know school and you know Unity Cross, they weren't it seems like they were just kind of too focused on you know just teaching or. Giving us the knowledge, but then they're not really, you know, guiding us to to make to make sure that we want to be done. We at least get a job in 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 our career field. So, you know, I would say that you know Western is a great school. You know, they our instructors here they're very you know they're very caring you know, for our success. You know, they make sure that you know we complete. You know, they always you know has me to. You should get your assignment done, you know, okay, it's, it's due, it's due, so uh, she made sure that, you know, I, I uh, turn in my assignments, and uh, that way, you know, I, I'm on track, and so it's the caring that you probably won't get anywhere else you know, than question here, so uh, I, I have to, you know, talk to, tell my sister, you know, my you know, friends, and, you know, like, hey, you, know, you need to go to school, from the Western and the high school, you will, you know, you will find that uh, the same kind of help that you know, I did as well. I mean, that's what I would probably tell you. Know, um, I mean, caring. Caring seems to be a pretty big differentiator. It's so, so personal for all of us. It really is. And that any place we go for service, we want someone to care about us. And to say that that's something that you remember, I really appreciate it. Anyone else like to add to something from a future looking back? Anything you'd like to add? Um, well, I still have a lot of friends in high school since I was in high school, so I think if when I when I graduate, I will definitely tell all of them to come to Western. It's uh, easy, it's affordable, so affordable, and it's just the best college experience, in my opinion. Well, will you join me in thanking our students for coming? <laughs> They not only teach you, like you know, on your on your program that uh, to make you learn. They also, you know, make it make it fun for you to learn to. And as well, as, you know, there's a there's a class that I, I took uh, two semesters ago. He was a he was a musician. Uh, so, so you know, you know who it is. You know. That, that was funny. I learned, I learned a lot, you know, about human body parts. You know, even, you know, more, more about myself, more about that as far as you know, measure tricks. That there's no other school left. Not that much. Well. Yeah, come, come here to the to see magic. <laughs> We'll ask you guys just to wait a second. You can watch this. It'll be fun. I'm going to give homework to your teachers. <laughs> I am going to ask you to, to take this next, just a few minutes on this, and take it seriously. Um, this is a you know, think, pair, share, turn to your neighbor type activity. And again, look around, make sure all your neighbors are included. But 
now that you've heard some examples from our students, and I truly appreciate you coming here for us, you know, what I'd like you to do is reflect a little bit on that perspective. How have you provided first choice service with your students, with your community members, with employers? Maybe share something that you're most proud of. And the second one is, you know, we all have room to grow and improve. What is something we can take to our classrooms that we can hear and it says, what's that extra, extra step, that extra level um, to make a personal connection? So if we could take and turn into a think peer share for a few minutes, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, visual manic management is a, a technique we've invested in. Um, I don't want to make this play a manufacturer or a healthcare institution, but I do want us to care about metrics and quality. I do want us to care about getting to the next right answer. And it's been a really good answer uh, for the senior leadership team. We built a, an actual visual management room that we use to launch our week's activities and our metrics. But it's used by organizations that want to really align what they're doing to their mission, to their vision, to their values, to make sure that their goals and that they're working towards a culture. And that's why we're using it at the senior leader level. What we've asked is to start bringing this down and bringing this to teams. And so many teams have embraced it so far, and they've been willing to share. So what they've had to do is kind of move some of their, some of these are permanent walls that they have, some of them have on these glass walls, and these huge boards in the areas, so they've moved them down to smaller words that they put out here for it, but I think it's really cool. It gives us that at-glance look of where something is, something that you care enough about to measure. And you've heard me say it at almost every in-service, you cannot hit a target that you can't see. So this is about putting our targets um, you know, very open and talking about them. So there's a lot of examples around the room. So we are going to uh, honor our colleagues today that have done this, so I'd please take the time, stop to see them, talk to them, take a look at these places that are there. But at the same time, we're taking a 20 minute break. So we'll come back, and when we come back, we're going to have Brian Knabel, who's going to be here from our auto program, and we're going to talk to Brian up in the front, so you're going to want to get back here. So we'll see you in about 20 minutes. I'm a very avid uh, water skier, Bob uh, Ski, who's done this for over 15 years. He's a friend. Started out in early morning, from 6 o'clock in the morning on the Black River. Um, and that particular morning, ironically, uh, that was my schedule yearly maintenance. Although it was physical. So I had been fasting since 9 o'clock the night before because my cholesterol was hovering a little bit higher than it should be. So the doctor always had a check with you. Um, so I went to 6 o'clock, so I could get down and get blood work, and I was. Um, going to school to start prepping for classes, and I was supposed to be with dog testing. Um, and so, you know, we uh, it started off docs skiing, and then it started out good, um, on the interstate bridge, and collapsed. And that's when I went to the <coughs> school. Um, so I had a cardiac arrest. Um, really no symptoms that you normally would have for a heart attack. You know, this, I'd been washing our house, doing all kinds of stuff. Um, and I, I really, everybody tell you, heart attacks don't happen in any way. Um, so they rushed me to, uh, to the doc. They couldn't perform CPR. They left my ski on in six to eight minutes uh, without oxygen. Um, they shocked me four times, but got me stable enough to get the nail. Um, that day they, hit, they put five stents in me um, because I had a lot of blockage. Um, uh, so that, that's what it started. I was in intensive care. Um, basically, I was on life supports um, for several days. Um, Twelve days into this, they had induced me into a coma uh, to try to make it, you know, everything work better. So on the twelfth day, they, they made a decision to go back in and do some more, add some more blocking. Something was, I wasn't waiting on. So on the twelfth day, they put six more stents in. Um, on day 13, in intensive care, um, they, they started to wake up. Obviously, if you start skiing at 6 o'clock in the morning with some friends, you wake up in a different place. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was, I would say, the most horrifying thing I've ever been through. Not knowing where I am and what even happened to me. So my first, really, awareness of the world was pulling everything out of my arms um, because I thought it was a long video. You know? um, that was not good for my wife. Uh, that was the bad day. They sent her home and said, you know, 
come back tomorrow. And why I'm saying this is that that was half of the time I was in intensive care. I was there 25 days in intensive care. Um, of that, it was, like I said, not, not in the world. And he had those days back. Every day, my wife went to the hospital. Every day she left. So that's where it all started. Where it started with this school is that this is my wife now being asked, you need to start filling out forms because I know he's going to be on short term disability. So you have to fill out these forms out. My wife didn't handle this. There's no way. How do we keep things straight? Um, along with my family, and my daughter is in social work. Helps a lot. Um, but I will tell you that Jody Chwaski, she did so much with my wife um, in terms of filling out paperwork, calling, emailing. She didn't need help. And not have to do that. So, you know, without oxygen for six to eight days, um, or hours, but with uh, mentally, cognitive is not good. Where, <laughs> if you have been in the hospital, not get food. You don't, have, you don't get anything unless you know what. You have to have a bracelet on. I was cheating with my bracelet for a while because you have to have a birthday. Nothing. So I woke up basically on one of the one, one person that's just like taking your file folders and just taking them all. Reorganizing all of your files. They felt that everything was there um, uh, because I did wake up the right way. I was able to do that. And so my wife knew that was okay. Um, and so where I'm going is that this process, not only at mail, but here. It didn't start with just paperwork. It started as I came back on board. One day in my room, when I was back in my third room, I was laying in bed going, and how do you get back to being an online instructor? When you start out not even able to draw a clock, because that was one of my big tasks, trying to therapy, was to draw a clock. I, I, it was really bad. Um, and I just kept progressing. The one thing that I made very positive was you just got to start with a positive attitude. Get back to doing what you want. Every day. Every day I went to therapy, whatever the therapy was, which was morning and afternoon. So I just kept that in my mind. And so I just, if I did something, I did more. If they asked me to do four steps, whatever it was, I had no balance, I had no physical, I lost a lot of muscle mass. <coughs> so I had to work, relearn how to walk. Um, I just did more every day. What, you know, got to um, so at that point, uh, that you know the paperwork kept going. Um, they had a decision made as to what was going to happen. Now, get remember this is August twenty fifth. This is on a Friday, on which PDD started Monday, seventeen. We don't have a really large lack of mass um, instructors out there waiting to. <laughs> this is look, you have to have a lot of skills, hands on skills, whatever it may be. We just don't have a, a database. And so all of my staff, um, that included an integrated technology center, they sit down that week and make a decision as to who's going to take his teaching loan. I mean, in order to do this in a week, how do you do that? Um, we are all kind of specialized. We all have our areas of expertise in what we did in the field. And I happen to be starting with uh, automatic transmissions all the time. And so that's kind of a daunting area anyway to teach automatic transmissions. <coughs> and so, first of all, who are we going to get? Well, we have five terms. We go through the summer. And so in the summer term, um, uh, Phil Silver and 
Adam Repke are on in the summer, and Phil was supposed to come off and go into his downtime or break time um, for the fall. Um, they asked him, nobody else there to get a week, uh, whether he would step up and to do that. And he said, yeah, I'll do that. That being said, um, that's not his expertise. And so they switched. And this is what's so cool. Not only did our staff, but our integrated technology center, uh, Bob Marconi and uh, Josh Gamer, worked to change our curriculum. So we flipped our courses that we took in the spring term, we flipped it to the fall. Um, and so it worked very well for Bill to be able to come in and go right into Dry Systems 2, which he had just finished up in Dry Systems 1 in the summer. And so it was a seamless transition for him to step in and do that. I made it much more comfortable and easier. And again, this all happened, happened because of our entire staff all working, sitting down and doing this in the week. And we started on time with our students. That being said, let's go back to the cognitive part. I'm still laying in my room thinking, how are you going to get back? I asked him, how do you know when you're ready to go back to the conditions? Not only do you have hands on, you have customers, a lot of multitasking goes on lab setting. The school again stepped up, sent out, and worked out a plan to bring me back on with short-term disability, by the way, runs out in three months. That was November 21st. And I was had my cardiac for the rest on August 25th. And so I'm like, okay, how can I come back now? This is the end of the spring coming up in December. How do I step back in and even know? I had no idea. I asked the people at mail, how do you know when you're ready to start back to work? They said, I don't know. There's nothing really out there, and there isn't. There's nothing out there that really know me that I start teaching. So um, the staff again set out and came up with a plan to bring me on on November 21st so I could come off a short term and be able to work for our, our program, but basically I came on as, as an assistant. So I was doing the shop project. I was able to work on my curriculum to get ready for spring term. I was able to um, just assist in labs. So why? Because it needed, I needed to process it. I needed to know that I could handle that thought process. And so Andy Olson, and I, <laughs> it was the neatest thing. He needed a cabinet gone through and reorganized for, for doing fuel pressure testing and things like that. He said, here's your task. Okay, here's all these fittings. You're gonna reorganize and put this in a logical order. Make it happen. Yeah, it took several days to get this project done. But it was the best project he ever gave me because it made me have to think through that process. And that's how our, that's what this entire stuff is. So, I was able to do that to the end of the term and come back on full time after our Christmas break, holiday break, uh, in January, come back on and now automatic transmissions picked up that day. So that's where I say kudos to everybody here, the HR department, wherever my wife had a question, I was taken care of. Very seamlessly. Well, you were answered three of my questions, which was wonderful. <laughs> but I, I just want to ask you a maybe very open one, similar to what you're talking about. Why is it important at Western that we take care of each other? We don't succeed. It's that simple. If we don't work together, you don't get back to what you're doing. And that's my catchphrase, the entire process, every day. You know, how you doing? I said, I'm gonna get back to doing what I'm doing. And 
that's exactly what happened not only on the water skiing, they had three goals for that. Just like the teaching. One of those goals was, which I met my goal this summer, which I had skied 30 times the summer before, I skied 32 this <coughs> A whole lot better. My, wife, my daughter, she skis in the morning with us. She said, Daddy, you're skiing a lot better than you ski the summer before. <laughs> you're like 40% better. <laughs> now, I'm not going to say that a teaching is that way. And I know that staff will tell you. <laughs> because it has been a huge process. The physical part, not a problem. By the way, the wellness of this possible. If you have not been there, it is unbelievable. You've done a great job. Very better than the line. So, that equipment that Nail had just purchased, by the way. Just purchased a new equipment at Nail. They got a lot more dollars than the Carlson. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, actually Carlson dollar. Right. Cool. they had just picked up two new pieces of equipment at any time I was through phase two and phase three. We have those here. That's why I wanted to those. Plus the hour. Right. Yeah. Oh, to work out. Um, and that's a line point. Yeah. So, we talked about one more question, Brian, and that was just you reflecting, 29 year instructor. Um, maybe you lost a semester. 28 and a half. <laughs> you talk about first choice service in terms of students. What is it that you use as a long time instructor? And how does that fit into your teaching, your instruction? Where is that important with your relationship? I guess I would just spin off of what the students this morning said. It's caring. It's, and I just, when we had our conversation, I was having my conversation with Adam Remke. I said, the difference is this. And I make a point of this, and I think every instructor needs to step out of what you do on a basis with the students. And not just, got your assignment done? You know, just have you show up and you're not here. Take the time to be personal with them in a simple way. And I did this just the other day. I have two students actually come in like 10 minutes ahead of class. Um, and they, they ask them the questions like, how's work going? And one of our students are working with one of our graduates. I'll be tech by the way. And he's working with him right now. He mentored. And now in the internship for our last term. And I said, so what kind of things do you get to do? Well, one was to do the online transmissions, things like that. But the point being is, be personable. That is huge when it comes to them. They are so much more warm and willing to want to talk to you if you just do things differently. You know, you're just not on the teaching level, you're not personable. We heard that from these students. Caring, going out of the way. Well, it's been just an honor to talk to you today, Brian. You know, you reached out to us that you wanted to share and talk about, or you just, he didn't ask to speak up here. He just wanted to share some of the people that really had made a difference for him. We thought this was an opportunity to share so he could share some first choice stories about how people interact with each other. So I want to sincerely thank you for coming out here and telling your story. Thanks for having me. talk to your neighbor as well. They've got it up on the screen, but what are some of the first choice service things that you've had happen between each other? Where are some places in this culture, in our colleges, that it's been alive and well for you? Where you've got to, to witness that, to feel that from other individuals that have lifted you up, helped you up at a time that you needed. How have you experienced first choice service from some of the staff? Why don't we talk about that for a few minutes? So turn to a partner, include other people in. Talk about where that's alive and well. Please, please stop. <laughs> Thank you. That's first service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so good morning. Um, I'm Amy Thornton. I serve in student service and engagement. And um, honestly, like, who wouldn't choose Western, right? Like, wow. 
um, what great stories, messages, conversations that we had with one another. Um, so nice to hear from students. Um, and I honestly, like Vang, we did a rehearsal too. Um, great guys, told some other different stories for all the amazing things that are going on here. Lisa and Perla as well. Um, everything that faculty and staff do for students here is truly, truly amazing. Um, and so we're doing it, right? I mean, we're kind of done. We should be able to kind of check it off the list. Um, but what I would say is that um, it's not, not so fast, right? So first choice service is about an intentional choice. So it's something that we think about doing every day. And we don't just do it as an afterthought, but we every day with every student we think about doing it. And probably with every colleague every day. I was thinking about that when Brian was talking. You know, it isn't just about students that we do that with every day. It's with our colleagues every day and really thinking about how we serve them too. Um, and it's not that we don't already do it because we do it all the time, but it's about getting better every day. Every day doing it a little bit better than we did the day before. And high level service is really an evolution. When you look at service overall, it's always changing. It's not the same today as it was yesterday. Um, and so some of those examples, I think Roger mentioned a few of them too. So um, banking. So those of us who've been around for a while, and I've been around for a while, um, all of these things were done a lot differently. So I remember banking, I was, really, I was always really excited to go with my mom and go grocery shopping into the bank because on Wednesdays we'd go through the drive through it was always cool. I'd get that sucker with the little string on the bottom of it. But, I mean, I know it's like really old. But I was always so excited about that. I wanted an orange one or a purple one. It was always a great day. Um, but now you do mobile banking, right? And on online, 24-7, I mean, I'm transferring money, you know, any time of the day, it's pretty amazing. Um, bagging groceries. I always remember we'd go through the go to the grocery store next, and there'd be a guy bagging the groceries, carrying them out to the car for her. Um, and now you just want to get through, right? I just want to check myself out. I want to either order it online and come and pick it up, or I want you to bring it to my house. Completely different, completely different service. But what people want that's different. Travel agencies. We used to work with travel agencies. Booked a great honeymoon trip for my husband and I. We went to Jamaica, survived Hurricane Gilbert back in 1988. Worst experience of our life, but we always said that if we made it through that, we could make it through anything. We've been married 30 years, so it works. <laughs> but we worked through a travel agency, and now you just go online, buy your tickets, and then you can like stay in somebody else's house and not even a hotel. So, so very, very different travel, too. And so we all know, too, that education has evolved. And certainly teaching doesn't happen the same way in the classroom as it happened 10 years ago, even five years ago probably. And I can guarantee you that support, support services for students are different. We're doing a lot, we're supporting students in a lot different ways than we ever have before. And one of the recent big evolutions at Western um, I want to share with you is the shutdown. So some of you either know or don't know, but we had people that came in and worked for the first time over our shutdown period. So we had 30 employees that came in and worked for three days. And in those three days alone, they served over 1,400 students. Wow. 1,400. Thank you so much. Tremendous, tremendous. <laughs> But 1,400 students that they served either face-to-face, -face, online, over the phone. It was an, an incredible effort and something really, really different that we haven't done here. So Wade is going to share another service evolution that's happened at Western. And then he's also going to talk about how we're moving customers, our customer-first strategies forward. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, the first service piece that I want to speak to is about somebody that you know, maybe didn't get the best rap today. And um, so, so this person, I've had the opportunity to, uh, actually what she does is she hosts an event at her house every every year for uh, first, uh, first year faculty members. I've had the opportunity to uh, ride with this person and she's offered to drive in busy major metropolitan areas. Um, she's hosted other events at their house and does a delightful, delightful job. Um, this person is Julie Stanford. And um, so Roger, I, I just have to call out a little bit to say that she is delightful. <laughs> 
So now what we've done is we've taken reading math and science labs and combined them and integrated them into one location. On top of that, integrated that with, what, with our library and reference services as well. So this is, again, as we look at what we're doing now compared to how we've been uh, doing the work in the past, these are the sorts of things that we're looking for. And, and then in addition with the Welcome Center, so, if, for those of you that have been here for a while, if you've been, you remember when we used to have college day at uh, the Turbo, mm -hmm. and there was one event that we had there, and this has probably been brought up before in the past, so I apologize for sharing this story twice, but it was, I remember it vividly, we were talking about how all of our welcome center services were throughout the college, and in different locations, and we, they did a visual of it by throwing a ball around, showing this is, represents our student going from one place to the other. And it really kind of did a nice job of visualizing that. So at that point in time, we said, well, it just makes sense to put all, all of our welcome center services into one spot. So that's what we did at that time. And it's been working great. So now, we'll take that evolution um, even further. Um, so what we're looking at right now, so for instance, rather than uh, students, uh, or excuse me, instead of staff taking students back to their offices, what we're looking to uh, have done now is actually having student or staff meet students out in the lobby area, take them to a triage center where they can actually kind of go through their issues and walk through their uh, pieces there. So it's a, us coming to meet them versus them coming to meet us sort of mentality. Um, and another example is that advisors will be fighting um, retention and other uh, service, uh, services in the division offices. Again, trying to get out to where the students are as part of that process. The Veterans Center. The Veterans Center um, has always had world-class service. I mean, they are so renowned throughout our state. Um, it, it's, the level of service there is, is just truly amazing. What we've done now with the facilities part of it is put it in a space where our vet students can have a space to gather and talk and share their experiences. We didn't have that before. If you were up in the space where the veterans office was, it wasn't ideal for that. It was very a little bit tight space and it didn't really work for that. So that's how our, uh, our service to our veteran students is evolving here. Learner support and transition. From a facility side, we're moving testing centers within learner support on the first floor. That'll be better you know, options or better, more convenience for our customers and our students. So that's one impact of, of what we're doing on the facility side. More importantly than that, though, if you think about last, um, last college day, talk about an evolution of service is what Chad's doing with his area in our poverty-informed uh, piece of it. I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about. And at the end of the day, because and Amy referenced this, I think Roger referenced this too, first choice service, all these things that I talked to here today, these were in motion prior to when we rolled out Experience 2025. And I say that because it's not that this college didn't really do it at first choice service. It has been great at first choice service. We've been here over 100 years. We wouldn't be here now if that wasn't the case. But if you think about it, a lot of you have taken strengths finders and done that piece of it. And the focus of that process is to focus on your strength. And that's what I think this is part of Experience 2025. This helps us focus on this strength. You've seen what? what the students said, you've seen what Brian said, those are just amazing stories, things are doing well already. So the reason we've kept it into, into the uh, experience 2025 is we can't lose sight of it, we can always continue to grow, but again, it's something that's just been amazing uh, as we've kind of come past the last 100 plus years. Oh, that's still me. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, all right, so that's still me. Hey, uh, these next ones, we just want to highlight who our strategy leads. So every every strategy has a lead uh, or lead or two attached to them. And so we just want to recognize the folks that will be taking on the leads of 
these strategies, and I won't go through what the strategies are, we touched base on those at the last college day. So as far as implementing the enrollment journey and customer relationship management system, again, that one's well underway. We have Amy, uh, Deb, Heather, and Tanya Van Toll leading as the leads on that strategy. Using a real-time or point-of-service feedback to respond to stakeholders, we have Michael Coretta and Lacey Prox leading that category. Um, on 100% of employee complete essential experience professional development, we have Dan Murphy and Denise Carr as our leads there. And then finally, on the implement K-12 on-ramps to increase the percent of high school students who transition to Western within the first year. Uh, Tyler's so good, he only uh, needs himself on that apparently, but uh, <laughs> Tyler Ludekin is going to be our lead, and actually we are looking to, to pull another lead with that piece of it too. And so where we're at in that process right now, we've had a kickoff meeting with the leads uh, last week, um, established teams, some of you will be contacted to see if you're willing to serve on a team uh, as, as part of that process. And then they've developed project charters, which is most of you have probably gone through the process of developing a charter, you can see kind of the things that work out there. So we're off to a good start and look forward to continuing the work. Now I think I move. Yes. All right, so I want to go back to the idea of evolution and introduce Dave Fish. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Dave's been evolving at Western for probably about 100 years. <laughs> 103, I looked it up. 103, 103 years. No, actually, I think it's about 34 years that Dave has been here. I rounded up. <laughs> So Dave is a career coach at Western, and he's also our athletic director. Um, and he has built his career around serving students. I also am going to bring up Micah McCann. She's also in the audience. Micah is a, a college advisor for the college. And she's actually just, I think, beginning her evolution at the college. I think she's been here maybe almost three years or so. Um, and Mike is a college advisor. She serves as kind of a retention coach for students. She works with Kutau, and some of the great things that they've been doing is that um, you can typically, typically find them um, meeting students where the students are at. So you will see them in the Union Market, or in the Union Market, Union Grind, on social media. So doing some really great stuff in first choice service for students. So Dave and Mike up. the other day because I was at a high school. So my first line is, hi, my name is Dave Fish. I'm a career coach located at the <laughs> Welcome Center. And contrary to popular belief, I did not start working here in 1912. <laughs> <laughs> Could have gotten that straight. But I've gotten a chance to work with now four president district directors. Um, started here and Charlie Richardson was here, uh, Beth Simone. Um, Dr. Lee Rosh and now um, Dr. Stanford. Um, okay. Be <laughs> <laughs> here a couple more years. I'll help you. <laughs> you know, I was you know, working with Shondell for a month, and I got you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll be 35 years in March, um, but it started before that. I am a graduate of Western. Um, got hired um, the day after graduation. I started working at Chalita. I worked there for three years. I was also coaching here at the time. So if you have the five years, both going to school and working outside, it's 40 years that I've been involved in Western. Um, it hasn't all been in high school relations. Um, I did work in student services for a while. Um, school government, they love me. Um, they love me so much, they raised the most amount of money for a fundraiser where uh, the person that raised the most had to kiss a pig. <laughs> there I was, front page of the Cross Tribune, puckering up against a little poker and put <laughs> that down. Um, so after a few years with that, I, I did go back to high school relations. Um, Amy Thornton um, took over the marketing program and she traded for me. I used coffee pot and a couple of future grab choices. <laughs> um, so I appreciate that. Um, I want you to think back in high school. Um, some of you, maybe it was more than four years, but um, that was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> 
But think about when a college rep came to the school and there was maybe an announcement, you know, so Dave Fish from Western is going to be in the guidance office that day. Maybe you went down there, maybe you didn't. And we did that along with every other college and a lot of colleges are still doing that. Um, that all changed for us um, probably eight, well, eight, nine years ago now, where we went to the career coaching method, where a number of us went through training and um, got certified to become career coaches. And we contacted the schools in our district, you know, the 30 schools that we work with. And so right now we are spending a half a day to a full day in each of the schools in our district, which allows us to meet one-on-one -on -one with students, be an extension of the counselor, um, over curriculum, over placement, um, set up shadows, and really get to know the students and follow through with them, you know, right up until registration, which we will be doing this year. And it really didn't hit me to about halfway through the first year. Um, there's one school in our district that the superintendent thought, well, no, if we allow you to do this, you'll be all the turbo, all these other colleges are gonna come in and they're gonna wanna spend a day in our school each month. Well, you know, that's not gonna happen with those schools. But we showed the initiative that, that we did that. And I went to that school and set up just a regular meeting and they said, well, you're gonna have five or six students. Well, I get there, 20 students come down. And I have half an hour for these 20 students. And then I was done, I did the best I can. And I know in instructors, you get more students. But you're not trying to talk about 15 different programs in that 20 minutes. So I left there and I just felt, you know, I didn't do them justice. And that's where, where the career coaching really hit me, where, um, yeah, I could follow up with them and stuff like that, but I felt like a little bit defeated. So I came back and Debbie Heather was my boss at that time, and I came in and she figured I was gonna complain about something. And, um, and I said, you know, I really do like career coaching. I, I feel better I, you know, when I do work one-on-one -on -one with the students, and I know that they have all the information. So this is supposed to be a little bit more about, you know, the every student every day, and a couple other, a couple other little stories. Quick. Um, each year I go to WISCA, which is the Wisconsin School Counseling Association, and the Technical College is, as, as a group, we're there. This is the Wisconsin School Counseling Association. We set up, this year we'll have 14 of the 16 technical colleges on the road. And it allows us to share some information, but we're reaching other high schools that we don't get to see. Um, we have our catalogs, we have our information, we can be one on one. We do some sectionals, you know, and when they let us, um, I've, I've taken our um, artificial arms from respiratory therapy where they take arterial blood, so counselors can try, you know, see the hands-on type of stuff that we do. But I was talking to Southwest Tech, and they had a thing called a recruiter scholarship, where if a student was looking at maybe Madison College or Western over a program at Southwest Tech, they could actually offer them a $500 scholarship. Well, I brought that back to our foundation, and um, they came back and they decided yeah, we like that idea. So they took some of the scholarships that are available, you know, for students now that maybe weren't getting used, and um, they allowed us through high school relations, you know, you know, the career coaches and the adult recruiters, to offer some scholarships to students. A um, couple of them went to uh, valedictorian at two different high schools. Okay, they could have went anywhere. They're here. One in nursing, one in accounting. Both are at a 4.0 after their first semester. Salutatorium in OTA program. Okay. But the really neat thing is I work with the counselors, and Matt does too, Matt Keel, the other um, high school career coach. We work with the high schools for those students that maybe needed that extra push. They need that little bit of extra money. Um, maybe to come to school, or maybe that to show that we want them to come here. So I, I want to, you know, 
a big thank you to the foundation for working with us with that. Um, I've had two counselors that have been in tears. And I say, hey, I'm going to offer this student, you know, a scholarship. And it means so much to the counselors, but it also means so much to the students. You get them here. And I think that is every student, every, you know, every day. Um, a lot of you probably remember a couple years ago, Dr. Raj talking about a young lady that came up to one of our staff members just to thank um, them for what they did for her family. Well, that was that person. I was at UW Richland for a college mm -hmm. fair. This young lady comes up. I had no idea who she was. She said, I just want to thank you. I thought, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> and she just explained, you know, lived in an apartment, didn't have a lot of money, and mom came here, went through one of our health programs, got a good job, they bought a house, just it changed their whole family. Um, you know, I was, I brought the story back right away, you know, and kind of checked up on it and stuff like that with the instructors and things. And we know that we change families and students' lives. But when a person really comes up and, and thanks you for it, um, I mean, you really think about it. And that's what all you guys do. And that's I what we all do. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Mike Marie McCann. Um, I do just go by Micah, um, so that's a long name. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about things that I've witnessed here at Western that really speak to how First Choice Service impacts our students. So. This is a plant, it's called the Rose of Jericho. And uh, between me and this little plant, we're going to give you like your object lesson slash botany lesson for the day <laughs> that'll help tie in like maybe a little visual, I'm a visual learner. Um, just what first choice serves for me. So Rose of Jericho is a desert plant and it does something that's really cool. Uh, once all the water dries up in the area and it can no longer absorb moisture from the it curls up in on itself and it has the ability to just go and blow around the desert. Um, this is a little bit different than tumbleweeds that we see um, out west because those tumbleweeds blow around to disperse seeds, um, whereas the Rose of Jericho will tumble around until it can find a source of water. Um, this can stay dormant for years at a time. You can, um, the way I found it, I don't know how many of you have a green thumb, but I do not. So I was Googling plants that are hard to kill. I do have a Christmas cactus at home that just has a will to live. So, uh, so I haven't killed that yet, thankfully. Um, but when, when I was asked to talk today and think about what first choice service means, this plant came to mind. Um, because it's a lot like our students. If they don't get the service that they need, if they don't get the support that they need, they will pull up their roots and find a different school. Mm -hmm. um, and I speak to that as a person who did that. 30% you know, of all college students transfer eventually. Um, and I didn't get the service I needed at my first school. I did at my second, so I was successful my second time. Um, so what happens when a Rose of Jericho does find the water it gets? In the course of four hours, it turns green and opens up again. And that's exactly how quick, not exactly four hours, but <laughs> <laughs> when a student comes to us in the Welcome Center, and they have four to five different transfer colleges sometimes, and you can tell they're just tired <coughs> of it all. They just want somewhere they can feel like they belong. And you give them that support that they need. And you refer them to the resources that will help support them and get them to their degree. They open up just like this. And they turn green and they thrive. Mm -hmm. So some of the students <coughs> who come here transfer in and they're already tired. Some of them are losing the wind of the sails a little bit. And some of them are, you know, 
fresh from high school or they're finally ready and don't need as much support as others. What's a really cool thing at Western is that all of these types of students can thrive. They all have that ability if we just give them the right amount of support and teach them how to be self-advocates and how to navigate our systems um, and how to learn. So we take students who have really rough backgrounds. We take students who have never had to worry or want for anything in their lives, and they all can be successful here. Um, something I wanted to say about this is that I get those students who transferred away or quit a while back and are trying a different school. And this fall term, it struck me that the first week of classes, I had a student call from UW La Crosse. She had moved into the dorms. She was all set to go. She went to her first week of classes, and she called and she said, my God, I was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And she said, is there, any, is there any chance at all that I can start at Western on Monday? And I was like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, we can make that happen. <laughs> um, throw another wrench in the engine. She wanted to start the program. Orientations were all done. And I was like, ah, okay, let me call the chair <laughs> and we'll see. And we got her in. She is um, continuing on. She's doing really well in our foundation's teacher education program. Um, I had three other students from three other schools just last fall call in that first week. They did not fit in, they didn't feel like they were getting supported, and they all wanted to, in two cases, they were coming back to Western. In one, they were coming to Western for the first time, they had gone on a campus tour um, at some point, and just felt like it was a better fit, and they were all already moved in, they all had leases they needed to get out of, and they all came here instead after that first week, just on campus, um, and one of them's had kind of a rough term, but he's registered for spring and he's trying again. So it's pretty cool, uh, the stuff that we can do. And that's another point too, is that with our students, even the ones who aren't always successful every term, I like that they keep coming back. And I like that more often than not, if they get a D or an F in one of your classes, they want to take that class over with you. And I think that's awesome doesn't always work um, schedule-wise and everything, but I think that the amount of service that you're giving to them as faculty is speaking volumes. So it's like, yeah, I didn't do so well, I need to pass that class, but can I, can I really get it with that same instructor? Sometimes it doesn't work, but it's really cool that they want, they don't feel like you failed them. They feel like they failed you, and they want to prove to you that they can do it. So there is one way that you can kill a rose of Jericho, and that is by giving it too much water. So we do all of our first choice service. We, but that doesn't mean that we give every student everything that they want every day. We can't do everything for them. And I think that the way we're doing things, everyone has a little room for improvement, of course, but the way the students keep coming back and they keep wanting to try again, um, it's, it just shows that we're doing really well as a college, and that's really what makes Western pretty special. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Martha and Dave. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming today. Um, there will be a survey. Um, don't worry about saying good things about me. I'll fill that in. <laughs> Save you some time. Uh, I do want to do a shout out. The Union Market is open today. Um, kind of a limited menu, but some cool things with ramen noodle and make your own. Liz, you better check that out. I think you're going to like it. Um, but usually they aren't open on this day, but they are. Uh, I'm not paying for your lunch today. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, you know, as, as the stories were told, and I think that's the, the best part of this day is the stories, um, I just want to close with one, and I don't mean it to be sad. Um, but 11 years ago today, I got a call um, in the morning, and um, my staff, and I remember looking at Janet Erickson's face, and my mom, my parents were in Appleton, my dad was in hospice, and my mom said, come home. 
Um, they all looked at me because they know me and they think, how on earth is this crazy person going to get her cat and drive to Appleton and, and make it safely? And Janet said she'd drive me. Uh, they all were there for me, Carla and Jody and Betsy. John wasn't there yet, so I can't take it. <laughs> but that's what first choice service is. I went on my own. I made it from the admin building to the public library and I got a call that my dad had passed away. So I took my time, made it home safe, and I did what I needed to do. But the people here took care of me. So every story you heard today is so important, and we all have them, and we all have wonderful people, um, whether it's magic, whether it's being there, whether it's making it 100 plus years. <laughs> so I want to thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed breakfast, and have a great day. And please drive safe. Use your judgment today on the roads. Thanks, everybody.